We live in a dangerous time in America where white Christian nationalism is on the march. It has been infused with energy because of Donald Trump and the things that he's allowed to be normal. Things that used to be whispered about in radical circles are now the norm and they're preached from the pulpit. I'm gonna talk about Joel Webin once again today, unfortunately, this misogynist, racist puke who has bastardized his own faith. He has, he has twisted uh, in a demented, violent way the, the philosophies of Jesus Christ. He apparently still is very fond of Levitican law. He wants to have it both ways, like all of these hypocrites do, that Jesus fulfilled the law. There's no need for the law anymore, but also we need to kill people that I disagree with. We need the death penalty for women. Women shouldn't be able to vote. No rights for women, all for straight white men. Pretty on par for this type of a ghoul. But this is extra ghoulish. I'm gonna play a clip here where he is calling for the public execution of women who falsely accuse as though this is some rampant problem in America or the world where women are just lying and accusing men of sexual assault. It is not something that happens with such regularity that we need to start calling for the death penalty at all. But because it's women and they are second class citizens, it's a problem for Joel Webin. Watch this and then we will address some of these horrible, insane, for him, Christ-centered points of his faith. In Israel, and this should be the law of the land in our country and every country still to this day, this is a timeless principle, a timeless universal truth. If you perjure yourself by bearing false witness, accusing somebody else, whatever the penalty would have been for that person, had they been found guilty, then that penalty should fall on your head for falsely accusing them. So if you accuse in a court of law, falsely accuse someone of murder, and it turns out in the final analysis that that person is not guilty of murder, and neither are you, but you falsely accuse them of murder, and the penalty for murder should be capital punishment, life for life, then you, even though you have not committed murder, because you falsely accused someone else for murder and the penalty for that crime would have been death, you should be put to death. That's what the text is saying. And if that were to occur and the just penalties were to be enforced, you, the false accuser, is now put to death and that's a public death, it's a public sentence, publicly carried out, then the citizens of these United States of America, you know what they would do? Hashtag me too would end real fast. How, how do you, false accusing, playing the victim when you're actually not? Like you know how to end that real fast? All you have to do is publicly execute a few women who have lied. All of this is predicated on the presupposition that women en masse are lying about when they are sexually abused by men. You know, it, it couldn't really just be that sexual assault is primarily wildly committed disproportionately by men. Why is that not what we presuppose? Especially when men like Joel Webin hold the opinions that Joel Webin holds, that he espouses. Let's, let's go to the Bible though. You don't need to listen to little old me. I grew up in this faith tradition. Uh, I, I, I could see myself as a child sitting in the audience of a Joel Webin sermon. Th this is the kind of, of nonsense that I was subjected to uh, on Sunday mornings and Sunday nights and Wednesday nights. It was a multi-day a multi -day church service uh, childhood for Jesse Dollimore. <laughs> but let me, let, me, let me share a few scriptures with, with you and with Joel Webin that maybe he would like to, to amend his, his whole theory here that if you lie about something that carries the death penalty that you should also carry the death penalty. You should get the death penalty. Because one, not every rape in the Bible comes with the sentence of death. In Deuteronomy 
22, 28, and 29, it says, If a man find a damsel that is a virgin, which is not betrothed, and lay hold on her, and lie with her, which just means have sex with her, and they be found, then the man that lie with her is not committed to death, not put to death, doesn't get the death penalty. What's the punishment for this rapist? Oh, it's, um, he must pay the damsel's father, the virgin's father, 50 shekels of silver. And, and the man, his punishment is to marry the woman that he assaulted. And she shall be his wife because he hath humbled her. He, he may not put her away all his days. Oh, that's the punishment for the dude. Sounds like a punishment for the woman, does it not? Well, not always the death penalty, Joel. Maybe if you actually read your Bible, you would know this. You know, I think the most appropriate scripture here is, well, actually, let's do this first, since I have this. Joel, you know, friends, acquaintances, certainly simpatico relative to ideology with Tucker Carlson, what he is doing here is calling for the death penalty for, for Tucker Carlson. Because if indeed he truly believes that the death penalty should be applied, if you accuse someone of a capital crime that did not commit that capital crime, biblically, that you should be put to death. Well, Tucker Carlson, just as, 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 as late as last month, was accusing Barack Obama, uh, the married man with two children, of being gay. So should Tucker Carlson be put to death? According to Joel Webin, that is the penalty. What I would like to more, more, more talk about is, I'll get the phone out here, these prophets of God, these men of the cloth, these representatives of Jesus the Christ, who are liars. Because there is a scripture in the Bible that talks about the death penalty for someone who makes a prediction using God as the conduit or them being the conduit through God, for God, that if they lie and the thing they say doesn't come to pass, they should be put to death. Again, one of, uh, one of Joel Webin's favorite books, Deuteronomy 18, 20, and 22. Um, but the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. And if thou say it in thine heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord hath not spoken? Uh, it's King James, so it's a, little, <laughs> it's a little wonky, but they're saying, well, yeah, well, how will we know if a prophet says something that wasn't the word of God? Scripture 22, when a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, means if it doesn't come to pass, nor come to pass, it says, um, that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken, but the prophet hath spoken it presumptuously. Thou shalt not be afraid of him. So when it says here that, or speak the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. That's a death penalty, folks. Coming straight from the bat phone. Then you don't even need a bat phone. You got the scripture. You got what the Old Testament says. They love the Old Testament so much. These hypocrites, these liars, these false prophets, these absolute arrogant trolls who would bastardize their own philosophies and deeply held religious convictions. In this case, Joel Webin, the racist mis misogynist who's oh, petrified, what will I do when I see people with, what did he call it? Uh, this is from a few months ago, in Hindu garb walking around my neighborhood. How am I gonna explain this to my daughter? Calling for the death penalty for women who make accusation, accusations against men. I am not a religious figure, person anymore. But coming from this faith, it, it, this smacks, it, it's just gross. It's, it, it's beyond hearsay. It's, this is blasphemy to bastardize the faith that you claim to hold. Is it not? If you're a Christian, are you not just, 
I, look, I don't like the word offended because I don't really even know what it means, but shouldn't this just strike you at your core as just disgusting and wrong that someone who claims to be speaking for God, to be a shepherd of a flock, to lead them astray, willingly, knowingly, Trump, voting for Trump, representing Trump, Trump's ideas, doesn't pay taxes, not a contributor to our society, yet's got all kinds of opinions about how it should be run. That's something we should stop right away. There should be no uh, uh, getting out of paying taxes if you're a, a, a religious figure, none. Sorry, you get treated like any other nonprofit. Uh, what do you think? I'd love to know. You can call. Leave me a voicemail, 714-576-4054. Of course, as always, you can email me daily at dollamore.com. I would uh, suggest that if I am in your flavor of political commentator, you help support this work. You can help me make these videos, not always with the Jesus bat phone, bat phone to Jesus, but you know, sometimes with it. Uh, you can click the join button below for $2 a month. You can become a channel member. You can also go over to patreon.com slash I doubt it podcast. Great ways to help support this work. I would appreciate it very much. Follow me on social media. I'm at Dollamore just about everywhere. And I will see you next time. Not always a Bible study, but you know, it's Sunday. What are you, what are you gonna do? A little, little, little Bible study. <laughs> Be genuine. Take care of one another.